active air glow boosted by solar activity and we're having a geomagnetic storm watch again for G2 and this is what uh, a gif of uh, what these waves are active air glow boosted by solar activity the pale waves in this movie are not clouds it's air glow the air glow above Missouri has been very active this week reports Dan Bush of Albany Missouri he says here's an animated GIF from May 29th, 28th. The air glow is a chemical reaction. In Earth's upper atmosphere, it occurs when oxygen atoms, O, and oxygen molecules, O2, bump together about 95 kilometers above Earth's surface. The collisions produce green photons, much like the green of the aurora borealis. Solar activity boosts air glow by heating the upper atmosphere. Warmer air causes more collision and thus more green light to emerge. And studies show that air glow is up to 40% brighter when the sun is most active. And indeed, this is why air glow has been relatively bright this week. Solar activity is high. The ripples in Bush's air glow movie are not, however, caused by space weather. Earth weather is to blame. Storms are going on in Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas when this occurred, says Bush. Convecting updrafts from these storms hit the air glow layer, creating a bullseye pattern of pressure waves that rippled across the Missouri sky. Concerning the geomagnetic storm watch, G2, NOAA forecasters say that G2 class geomagnetic storms are possible today, May 31st when a CME is expected to graze Earth's magnetic field. It was hurtled into space by an X1.4 flare on May 29. This forecast is uncertain. NOAA's model predicts a stiff glancing blow, while NASA's model suggests a near miss. If an impact does occur, the resulting storm could be extended into June 1st. What is the NOAA model predicting? This is it right here. There we go. This is it right here. Okay. Coming at us today, right here. That's what they predict. And the CME, this is what's coming at us. There you go. That's the CME from what we see. And the G2 class geomagnetic storm power systems, high latitude power systems may experience voltage alarms. Long duration storms may cause transfer damage. Spacecraft operations, corrective actions to orientation may be required by ground control. Possible changes in drag effect orbit predictions. Other systems, HF radio propagation can fade at higher latitudes. And Aurora has been seen as low as New York and Idaho, typically 55 degrees geomagnetic latitude. So we are in the solar maximum, as we know, and we've had a tremendous amount of X flares these, these past few days. And as we said before, the Earth's magnetic field uh, will be uh, hit by the glance of the X 1.4 flare coming to us from May 29. This is the latest on space weather. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. Support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.